Um, first thing we're going to talk about, since they actually made some changes in CS6, is, is cropping. So I'm going to open this image here. And here, uh, it's, it's sort of tightly cropped the way it is. In the past, when I had images like this of, of buildings, I'd, I'd often want to correct for the perspective. And you used to be able to do that using the crop tool. But they've changed the crop tools functionality right now. So um, now, in order to change the perspective, uh, you have to use the uh, you have to use a filter. You have to use the lens correction filter. So under filter lens correction, we get this whole new uh, filter interface. And uh, let's see, let's fit in view here. And this allows us to correct for perspective. Now, they have in the auto correction, if, the, um, if you were using a camera that Adobe knows about, they would automatically find the camera model and the lens that you used, because in a big database that they have. Uh, in this case, this is an older camera, and it's a, it's a JPEG. Uh, it says it's an, uh, an Olympus E10. That's an old model camera, so they don't have the lens profile for it. But we do have, the, under the Custom tab, uh, I have a lot of uh, capabilities for uh, correcting for camera distortion, like this barrel distortion. Uh, so I can kind of, as you see, I can add barrel distortion or I can sort of take it away. You know, this is very common kinds of distortion. Uh, we usually don't need to add very much. I think, you know, in this case, you know, maybe just a little bit to combat the natural curvature barrel distortion in the lens. But the big thing is that I'm, since I'm tilting the camera up here, uh, the lines are converging. So you can go down here under the uh, transform area and change the um, vertical perspective to straighten it out. And you have a grid here, so you can kind of see how things line up on the grid. You'll notice now, as I've changed this perspective, it's it's trying to keep it inside of a crop, uh, but I'm losing part of the building, so I have to use the scale slider down here. So I'm going to scale it down, and you can see the distortion that's being applied here. It's showing up at the bottom of the frame. Um, and I can see that you know maybe I need to do just a little bit of rotation. This is where uh, it gets a little funky because it's very hard to move in smoothly here. It just tends to jump. Uh, I know that I'm probably, I've done this before, so I just need just a slight little bit of uh, counterclockwise rotation. So I'm just uh, editing the, the number down here from 360 would be perfectly uh, straight up and down. I'm doing 359.33 degrees just to give a slight uh, counterclockwise rotation so that now I see I'm pretty lined up here. I'm, I'm pretty lined up here. If you if you make it absolutely perfect, sometimes these the buildings look like they're a little overcorrected. So sometimes we want to just sort of cheat just so it's not quite as corrected as per, you know, you don't necessarily want absolutely perfect. So, like I said before, uh, it's, uh, you used to be able to, using the crop tool, you could uh, have it do perspective correction, but that now is no longer possible. They don't give you that option up here. Um, however, there's a couple of, of new things. By by default, this your see here this checkbox says delete crop pixels. By default that's not checked. So if I 
if I move in, move the crop in, let's say I move this all the way in like this. Okay, and I crop this. And I let's I save this. Okay, I close that. Now, if I go back to open that up again, there it is, and it's cropped, right? But because I actually didn't delete those pixels, I can come back into the crop and readjust it. So, for instance, now they tell me, oh, you've got to include that sign in the, in the shot. Um, and make sure you don't crop out the building here. Okay, so you can kind of come back in and, and recrop. This is it's it's a nice it's a nice thing to, to be able to do. Um, in fact, now I would like to uh, extend the sky a little bit. So I'm going to add just enough room up here, and you can see I'm actually cropping outside of. The picture and I have empty space back there this you're seeing transparency back here because it's now once you've cropped it it's not a background it's a layer and that's what that's one way that they can get around this uh, by not deleting the crop pixels we turn it into a, a layer when we when we an, initiate a, a crop like this so I'm going to go ahead and, and say okay now this is my new crop and um, I want to add the sky and I want to fill in this area so now the new way to do that is uh, using content aware fill how many people have heard of content aware fill this came in with CS5 it was like all the rage uh, and this is actually a useful application of it if I select the transparent areas here um, and then I'll expand the selection just a little bit so under the select menu modify expand by like a pixel or so this helps to avoid any little thin telltale lines in, in this in the along the sky here so I've, I've expanded the selection just enough so that I'm catching just a tiny little sliver of that blue and now all I have to do is uh, fill and use content aware. That's my option here. And it looks at the neighboring area and fills with appropriate information. So, you know, like this area down here. can see there's a little bit of, I don't know where it got this piece but it is doing it's attempting to fill this in with with something that that looks reasonable and we can it's easier to fix this than try to clone into that um, and you can kind of see it's made a little put a little black thing in here but up here up here in the sky there's a there's some noise in the sky and if I just filled that with blue, it would be obvious where the transition occurred. And right now, it's it's done a really good job of, of matching the noise, grabbing uh, and filling and extending that that um, that blue sky so that it's pretty seamless. Okay, so a a couple of caveats. You know, the the content and where fill is not perfect. And it will make mistakes. So you can see down here it made some mistakes. Um, if I if I come back here and I I extend too far, right? So if I wanted to go up here and fill this now, right? And if I use Content Aware Fill now. Let's just go and do content aware fill. The area is too big and the 
Content Aware Fill works based on the size of this selection. So it's the selection is big enough that it's now grabbing a part of the house and putting it up there. So um, you know you have to be careful how you're you're using Content Aware Fill. So in this case, if I wanted to do get this much sky, I can't I can't quite do it this way. Uh, it's better to um, better to do it in small steps so if we if we did it content or fill now I get a nice sky I can I can recrop again and just sort of add it a little bit at a time and I'll, I'll be much more successful in adding that sky okay so that's just a little tip on on doing that sort of thing.